You're listening to the number one podcast for nonprofit leaders, getting your nonprofit fully funded. This is the Fundraising Masterminds Podcast. Welcome back to the Fundraising Masterminds Podcast. We are so excited that you are with us. And I've got my co-host, Jim Dempsey, with us today. Hey, Jason. Hey, Jim. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Great. Well, we got a great topic lined up today. We're going to talk about food, aren't we? <laughs> We're going to talk about food. I love it. Um, we are going to be talking specifically about the gala, the vision dinner, the banquet, whatever you want to call it, but more specifically about the serving style Yes. Right of the meal, because a lot of people get hung up on this. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who will talk about, you know, a gala or a dinner, an annual fundraiser. Um, but they say, you know, well, they, they kind of take the approach of, um, you know, we've been doing buffets for a long time. Our guests like buffets, you know, we do Chinese food it's or warm, you friendly, know, whatever, warm, friendly, yeah. you know, it's cheaper. Sure. And, uh, Jim always rolls over in his grave every time he hears these arguments. I it it's like fingers on a chalkboard. Yeah. Jason. So we want to get into why is it fingers on the chalkboard for Jim Dempsey, and and if you are doing a vision dinner or a banquet or gala and you're doing a buffet, you know you might want to learn you know why Jim feels like it's like fingernails on a chalkboard uh, because it might be affecting your giving. And you may not even realize it. So stay tuned because we're going to discuss this in great detail. And we don't want you to miss the value that Jim is going to bring to the table. Over 38 years of experience doing vision dinners, guys. He's done over 2,500 vision dinners. He has seen the buffet lines. He has seen the plated meals. He's seen all the options. He's seen everything in between. You've even experienced sprinkler systems going off I in have. the middle of vision dinners. So you have a lot of experience and we want to learn uh, from your experience today. But before we get into it, uh, if you wouldn't mind just subscribing to our YouTube channel, you can head over to youtube.com slash fundraising masterminds, or you can just type in fundraising masterminds and you will find our podcast and you can subscribe, like, and comment because we want to know what you think as you're watching this video. And if you have any questions along the way, or if you think we're right or wrong about our opinions of buffets versus plated meal, uh, we want to know your opinion. We want to be able to interact with you and start a conversation. So Jim. Yes. Plated versus buffet. Oh, absolutely. We hear this all the time. I'm doing a vision dinner. I'm doing a gala and I want to save some money. Right. So, you know, I know I, I've taken your course, Jim. Yes. I understand the strategy. Yes. Yes. I know that you want to go for upscale. Right. But, you know, that costs, you know, $40 a plate or $50 a plate or whatever, the you know, it's going to be. And, you know, I can get a cheaper meal, you know, with a buffet. The plated yes. method versus the buffet. Right. You know, what's the difference? Yes. And I thought it would be kind of fun to play a little game. Okay. Open AI versus Jim Dempsey. All right, let's Which do it. Which one is the smarter person? Yeah, let's do it. Let's see what, what Open AI yeah. has to say about Nothing this. Nothing like an artificial intelligence going up against somebody who's had 2,500 meals. Well, the artificial intelligence knows everything that you said into YouTube. I guess that's exactly so we'll see right. if it, if it takes it. your advice. Yep. So we asked Open AI... I'm thinking about doing a perfect vision dinner. Should I do a plated meal or a buffet? Mm -hmm. This is what OpenAI had to say. Both plate, and I, I want your response okay. here, okay? Right. So, um, you know, give me your reactions. Okay. <laughs> Both plated meals and buffets have their own advantages and considerations. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yes. <laughs> the choice between them depends on several factors, such as the ambience you want to create or the number of guests at the type of event you're having or the personal preferences. Here are some points to consider about each one. Let's do the buffet first. Mm -hmm. So okay. here's the advantages of the buffet. Variety, number one, mm. variety. A buffet adds a whole range of food choices. Right. You can have the grocery store mm -hmm. in the line right. and have all your guests have choices. I mean, I like choices. Right. Can we have ice cream and pie and cake and... Along with our pizza. Pizza. I want pizza. I want macaroni. I want, you know... Nah. Sure. Is that... Is Comfort that food. <laughs> Comfort food. No. It's saying... Um, that's my interpretation. It's saying... The buffet adds a whole variety of food choices, allowing the guests to select their own preferences. This can be particularly useful if your guests have diverse tastes okay. or dietary restrictions. Mm -hmm. Okay. 38 years of experience doing 2,500 dinners. True or false? Well, 
uh, false from my standpoint. I believe that actually a plated dinner gives you more consistency mm-hmm. and allows you to deal with <laughs> dietary restrictions much better because it's actually targeted to the particular meal. Right. The plate, you don't have to change everything on the buffet for that particular dietary restriction, you can target right. the meal. Well, because a lot of times what we do is we'll put like a little dot on their name correct uh, placeholder, or, right? Or, or give on their them name a tag. three by five note card that says here's their particular dietary need. Right. Yeah. Uh, what are your response to the uh, to having more food choice? Yeah, I don't necessarily think that people appreciate more meal choices. I think they actually like one upscale meal. Mm-hmm. So I that's why I tend to favor a nice steak with starch and vegetables and a nice dessert and a salad. And it makes for a really, really nice experience for people versus a buffet line right. that We'll get into the buffet experience. line and and what that means, but I, I wanted I to so want to get into the it, buffet it, line. I know it's like getting into a cattle call, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so so the the open AI said yes. four things. So yes. the first one was variety. So we know <laughs> that's not you know I think Jim wins that one. Uh, number two, interaction. This one's kind of interesting. Yes. So it's saying the benefit of a buffet is that your guests get to s- interact with each other in line while they are waiting to be served. Uh, interaction in a kettle <laughs> line as you're being herded in your high heels, nice tight dress, and a suit and tie in a line while you're <laughs> trying to make your way through holding a plate and a glass, a drink, a dessert all together, hoping that those things don't <laughs> spill on your new dress or your suit is not a good experience. Right. And the interaction I, and I, interplay. I think we could save a little money if we use paper plates. And paper napkins. And, <laughs> and paper, paper spoon, yeah, plastic exactly. spoons. And- you, we, you lose so much. You can have a much better interaction with your guests, much funner time all just sitting at your table. Remember, Hmm. we utilize the table host method, which is friends inviting friends. So you are gathering people at a table of eight or 10, and they are enjoying the experience, not having to get up, not having to juggle eight items. It's a date night. It's special with your friends. To go on a date with your wife or your significant other, your girlfriend. And have to juggle your food while you're walking through a line in your nice clothes. Right. It's just not a good experience. No, it's not. You know, and that's why there's not a lot of restaurants right, that have buffets. Right, right, right. And when I talk about a memorable experience, I don't want it being memorable because I dropped a whole plate <laughs> of macaroni and pizza on my new dress. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. All right, number three. It's saying the benefit of a buffet is flexibility. Mm-hmm. Buffets are generally more flexible in terms of accommodating large number of guests as it reduces the need for individual plating and service staff. 100% false. Hmm. As somebody who has done hundreds of buffets in my lifetime, those buffet lines are incredibly slow. Hmm. Moving people through buffet lines, getting seconds, thirds, all in their first trip there, And going through a slow process, and then at the end of that, you've got a chef who is individually carving pieces of prime rib and pouring au jus over that Mm -hmm. is not going to speed up your service. And I can tell you that at an event where we are concerned about time, where time for the program is much more important than time for the meal... You've got right. to be concerned well, about that's, that. That's a good point because I think maybe some people don't prioritize the program or right. they don't have a program. That's right. Or they just think, well, I'm just going to stand up and I'm going to talk about the ministry. Right. So they're thinking, you know, buffet is like, um, well, it doesn't matter if it takes an hour. It doesn't, right. it doesn't right. matter how long right. it takes because the dinner is the thing. It's cooking in a crock pot versus a right. microwave. Well, and it's yeah. like, well, um, you know, 
that's what people are here for. They're here to eat. So let's just take lots of time. And then the program is just kind of like tacked on at the end. Right, right. You know, it's or, almost like the program is an afterthought. Right. And that's not what we do. No. Right. That's no. not our model no. at all. No. Um, I was going to say when you were talking about, you know, having the guy slicing prime rib. Yes. I was like, well, the solution there is just put chicken on the buffet. Forget the rib. Sure. And, and if, if a buffet can't get any worse, <laughs> you add chicken to the buffet. And it makes it ultimate terrible. Why? And so why? Well, first of all, if I'm choosing chicken over beef, right. I'm going to take beef 100 percent of the time because it is generally more pleasing and gives you more positive experience than chicken. Mm. And the only thing worse than chicken in a plated entree is chicken on a buffet. <laughs> where you are taking the tongs and grabbing the different <laughs> versions of whatever pieces, dark meat, white meat, whatever, right. that you like better. Yeah. Not a good experience. Well, that's the third thing. And the fourth thing that OpenAI suggests is a positive for buffets is a informal setting. Mm. The buffets tend to create wow. a more relaxed and casual setting, which can be more suitable for certain types of events. Wow. True well, or false? Uh, one, well... Certain types of events. No, 100% true okay. that it adds a much more casual experience. Okay. And I can tell you that all of our research and all of our anecdotal evidence shows us that the, the an event that you dress up more and you it, it becomes more of a date night, right. special event, more memorable raises significantly more money mm -hmm. than a relaxed picnic like mm -hmm. potluck type of event right hands down 100 percent. so the kind of perfect vision dinner that we are creating we want a more formal more upscale more memorable experience right. than a relaxed fun loving happy go lucky that right. doesn't mean that i don't want to have fun at our event right but i don't need it to be silly and i think that a buffet gives the silly experience all right well that does it for me don't take your development fundraising advice from open ai it is much better to bring Jim Dempsey in and learn from the 38 years of mastery of experience, right? Bring it to the guy who has eaten 2,500 meals. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to you know, maximize and give people the best experiences. Right, exactly. Um, well, Jim, I wanted to just share an experience that I had recently yeah. at a dinner. Uh, they actually called it a, a fundraising dinner. I, okay. I don't think they use the term gala, but they okay. did say fundraising <laughs> dinner. Or, I know the story. Gala would not have been the right, the right term for sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, this, if I mentioned the name of this organization, it's a reputable organization. It's a national organization. There's mm -hmm. hundreds of them in every state. Yep. And so when I was invited to attend this, I thought, you know, I, I'm thinking, you know, J crew, I'm sure. thinking FCA, I'm thinking, you know, Young Life. Right. I'm thinking, you know, these guys are on the same yes. level. Yes. And they've had some training and, you know. Unfortunately, I was invited to attend the dinner at a church. Mm -hmm. That was my first red flag. I was right. like, okay. okay. Uh, we didn't gymnasium, enter. Gymnasium. We correct? didn't enter into the front foyer. We entered into the gymnasium side door. <laughs> okay. You know? Right. Uh, so, and immediately the first thing that I saw was a buffet line mm -hmm. with servers right. getting ready. Right. And I saw a bunch of round tables with plastic uh, tablecloths. Right. Sure. And I just thought to myself oh no this just <laughs> smells like a potluck meal or right, something and right. uh so i immediately was like oh great this is this is not going to be very fun you know i i knew all the people there and i you know but i immediately just didn't want to be there anymore <laughs> well it didn't seem it probably was not going to be an elegant uh, uh or yeah i was looking forward for to you. having a date with my wife sure. we don't get right. out very often and right. I immediately was not looking forward to, I was looking forward to leaving as right, soon as I got right. in. Uh, you know, we sat down, we interacted with some people and then within, you know, a few minutes they were like, let's pray. And then everyone get up and, you know, <laughs> table by table, you know, they call it out like, you know, at a, ca a school cafeteria, table number five, right, go right. get your meal. Table number six, you may now get your meal. So you're sitting there for 30 minutes right, waiting for right. your number to be called. Mm -hmm. While you're watching all these people, you know, who have go got through. multiple piles of food, <laughs> you know, 
And, you know, finally we're, we're called to get into the line. I'm sitting in line for 10 minutes, uh, get there and, you know, handed a paper plate, which I was surprised. I thought it would be, you know, I didn't (laughs) think it would be a paper plate, but I was handed a paper plate and plastic spoons and I was served by teenagers and got my meal, sat down and here I am, you know, cutting my, I think it was chicken actually that they served. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I'm trying to cut my rubber chicken with my plastic spoons and forks and not my spoon. I'm trying to cut (laughs) my rubber chicken with my plastic knife and fork and um, just immediately wanting to... um, Exit the building. Exit right? the building, right. <laughs> um, and then, of course, I won't comment on the the program was very much lacking. You know, they, they more or less had the idea of we're going to bring in this band and we think the band is like the big highlight. Mm-hmm. So we're going to, you know, you guys are going to eat and then the executive director is going to get up and she's going to talk for 10 minutes. Here's the problem. And she, she did an okay job presenting the problem and presenting the solution. You know, but it was just kind of like, I got to do this real quick right. so that we can get the band up because right. everyone's here for the band. Right. Well, you know, the band must have appealed to, you know, the seventies and above because the only people that were in the room were gray haired, you know, older generations like my grandparents. They were the only <laughs> ones in the room. I didn't see anyone my age. I think we were one of the younger people there. Uh, I didn't see any younger people. I didn't see any of that. And normally at your dinners, I see multiple mm-hmm. generations. I right. see young, middle, old, you know, all of ages. Right. Um, and I just, as soon as the band started playing, I was like, when is this, how much are we giving? When are we going to get out of here? You know, I just wanted to leave. Right. So the whole experience was memorable, but it was not memorable in the way that we want it to in be In a memorable. good way. That's right. You know, it yeah. did not feel like um, having a date with my wife. Right. Um, so... Anyways, that's my experience. What are some of your experiences that you've had with buffets? Well, I nothing but bad experiences with buffets. I've had, I've had, to, I've been at events where they've had pizza served. I've had Chinese food served. I've had Kansas City barbecue served. Wow. Uh, but the the biggest thing is just generally that you're being served with tongs, the same tongs that everybody is being served with, and you've got green beans that taste like they just came out of a can and were just poured into a serving dish. You've got, for the most part, your salad that is just being scooped up. And a lot of that could be exactly the same way in the kitchen for a plated event, but somehow it just comes across so much more elegantly when it's presented on a plated version. Well, and a lot of times uh, when people, when we get into this topic of buffet versus plated, we also kind of, a similar topic is a dessert versus a dinner. Right. And it's kind of the same kind of idea. Usually the organization is trying to save money. Right, right. And so they think, well, I know what you're trying to get us to do, but we don't, that costs too much. Right. You know, so why don't we do everything that you say we're going to do, but instead of doing like a beef meal or a steak, why don't we do a dessert instead? So we can just have, you know, cookies and, you know, fudge and, or ice cream and, you know, do well, the same program so people can still have the yeah, same information, yeah. but it saves us $40 yeah. a plate. Well, and, and what they're thinking is you get people in, you get them out faster because of it. Right. But it actually has the opposite effect. And I'm really glad. I, I know for a season, desserts were really hot. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad to see that that season <laughs> has begun to pass because right. I just, I, I feel like, all it did was just cater to a get people in, get people out, and really not in, make it an enjoyable, memorable experience for people. Right. And and we definitely see a much better experience when right. we serve a full meal. Plus, when we're talking about a dessert, we have found that at least with a dinner, people feel like they want to cover the cost of their meal. At a minimum, Mm -hmm. desserts, everything is off the table. They feel like the dessert is is an add-on and there's no at least obligation to cover the cost of the dessert right. because how little can a dessert cost? I right. mean, it, it's not that much. Right. So there just is not the same priority. There's not the same special feeling for right. a dessert as there is. 
Right. So when we're talking about the perfect vision dinner, and if you're hearing that term for the first time and you're hearing about what is this perfect vision dinner that you guys talk about, we actually created a course uh, called the perfect vision dinner. Mm -hmm. And um, if you are doing a gala or a dessert or anything like that, and you're wondering, well, how does my dessert or gala or meal kind of compare to the model of the perfect vision dinner? Uh, we actually created a survey for you that you can fill out. We'll put a QR code on the screen right now and you can just get your phone out and scan that and it will take you to a survey where we will ask you 14 simple questions. It'll only take you two minutes and we will give you a score based on how your version of your gala or, or dinner compares or stacks up against the perfect vision dinner model. So and Jason, you can predict how well someone's dinner is going to... Yeah. We Before actually have a come. way of knowing uh, how well your dinner is going to perform yeah. uh, over uh, the perfect vision dinner. And uh, the results might scare you or shock you. Uh, <laughs> definitely surprise you. It definitely minimum, might right? surprise you because yeah. a lot of people get stuck in uh, thinking that, well, this is just the way we've been doing it and we've been doing it for 25 we've years. Always done it that way. And yeah. this is just what we do. And nobody right. questions what we do. Right. And uh, a lot of times, you know, you could be raising. 30, 40, 50% more money right. by just making a few little tweaks. Yes. Uh, and that's what we teach in our course. Yeah. So you uh, definitely uh, fill out the survey and we'll get an email out to you to help you learn more about the course and the program and all that stuff. Uh, but the main point that we're trying to make here is that the buffet cheapens the event. Right. 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 We're, we're not going for cheap. No. Right? We want to no. give people an elegant experience. We want people to feel like they're going on a date. Right. They're having a That's special right. evening. We want people to feel like they have to buy a special dress mm -hmm. or a special suit right. or get dressed up. And nobody wants to get dressed up in high heels and be all excited to bundle up and get into a car and go to the church gymnasium where they eat off of a paper plate and plastic spoons Correct. and That's sit right. and stand through a line yeah. to get their food. Right. It's just not very appealing. No. And even if you, you know, didn't even tell people that that's what they were going to do. As soon as they walked in the door, like my experience, I was like, Oh great. It's one of these right. types of right. things. And I immediately was like, how much do we want to write a check and let's get out. Right. Let's go to right. a real restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Where we're going to sit down and have a date. Right. You exactly. Know? Yeah. But the, the experiences that we give people, people for the perfect vision dinner is um it's a it's a memorable experience because you know we're treating them uh, very upscale right and it's done with excellence right. and and we we know the value of their time right but we try and give them the best experience with the program and everything we do the meal is important but it's not why they're there. Right. They're there because of the program and what they're gonna hear and the value of the organization. Well, and that's one of the points that I wanted to make too, is that uh, we're talking about, there, there's actually a proven statistic that uh, $1,000 a minute is about the cost of your donor's time. That's right. Right, and so for every minute that goes into your program, we don't wanna go past uh, two hours and 15 minutes. That's right. And we have a very structured, program with the perfect vision dinner model. So we want to get people fed as fast right. as possible. We want to give them the best experience. We yep. want to give them the, the most customized experience. Yep. Right. Right. And then we focus on the actual program, yes. you know, right. so the dinner is just, you know, 45 minute slot, right? Is that what right. it is? Or is yep. it 30? 45 minutes? We mm -hmm. have a 45 yep. minute slot for the dinner. And then the rest of the time is spent on the program. Right. And we have a very specific way to do the program, mm -hmm. which we're not going to get into in this podcast episode. Right. Uh, but if you're interested in that, you can check us out at fundraisingmasterminds.net and you can learn about the Perfect Vision Dinner course there. But it doesn't save time no. to do a buffet. No, it doesn't. In does. fact, it actually increases time. Right. And that's not what we're going and time for. time is valuable with our brands. So Jim, as we are concluding, I wrote down, here are five reasons why a plated meal creates a more memorable experience for your guests. Yes. You know what they are? Number one, attention to detail. Yes. Talk about that. Yeah. Well, we're talking about creating an experience that people enjoy. When you have got a like-minded 
event where everyone is is unified in what they're doing providing one set meal for people will save you money Mm -hmm. you'll give people the ability to be able to deal with any individual dietary concerns right but you are providing for them one single experience Mm -hmm. and it it has to be a good experience and with our meals and our program it's a good experience Mm -hmm. and that really helps with that right number two customization and personalization yeah when you're talking about a plated meal Mm -hmm. you can customize that meal before you arrive you can pick and choose what entree you want you can pick and choose what starch what vegetables what salad if you want caesar house salad you can pick whether you want a cheesecake and with that cheesecake you can choose something like strawberry you can control the portion sizes you can control the portion sizes absolutely Mm -hmm. so we have found over the years that a lot of hotels are serving 10 to 12 ounce pieces of meat well i'll tell you for a woman 10 to 12 ounces is way too much Mm -hmm. for a man you could bring in a side of beef and it's not going to be enough but they Mm -hmm. will fill up on the bread so you control the portion sizes make it best for everyone in the room and you can actually economize and save yourself money right. by not overdoing portion size. Yeah, in our course, we have a whole lesson on how to negotiate right. uh, the meal costs. And we actually can have, we and we actually have methods where we can actually save you up to $5,000, right. in some cases, even $10,000 right. on how to negotiate with the hotel and how to uh, get the, mm-hmm. the right customized yeah. uh, combination. And cut and meal portion are right. big elements of that. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, I mean, that just pays for the course, yes. uh, over, you know, 10 times over right yep. there. Um, number, let's see, we did number one and two, uh, number three, elevated dining experience. Oh, without a doubt. I think if we haven't already, <laughs> uh, proven our case right. that way, yeah. uh, you definitely, <clears throat> when you're talking about professional waiters, not students serving in a buffet line, right. professional waiters coming in professional black or white uh, outfits yep. and bringing in plated meals right. and serving them to you while you're sitting there quickly provide quickly provides for an yeah. elevated experience that people And as soon as enjoy. your meal is done they're picking up the plates the, they're cleaning right. things up would you like another cup of exactly. coffee you know it's like a very yeah. much you don't have to do a thing yeah. you don't even have to get out of your seat unless yeah. you have to use the restroom right yep um Okay, so elevated dining experience. Number four, enhanced atmosphere. Oh, well, without a doubt, a plated meal provides an atmosphere of elegance, as it said. It's an experience of upscale dining right. versus, like we said, going through a cattle call. that. Uh, yes, going <laughs> through that line. Yep. It is a much more elegant experience for yeah. people. I like this one. Number five. Uh, a plated meal facilitates connection and engagement. Uh, without a doubt. And in fact, I think I mentioned it earlier uh, when AI said that you have a nice experience <laughs> talking in the line while you're juggling <laughs> yeah. eight items with only two hands. <laughs> yeah. It is not a, a, not a nice conversational time. Well, to its benefit, I mean, AI has never eaten, so they've never had the personal experience of having to juggle food. Right. That so I guess we have exactly to give it that benefit. Give it that benefit. I'll give it the benefit (laughs) of the doubt on that one. But however, from the standpoint of making sure that you are enjoying the experience at your table, the conversation, you are talking about the things you want to talk about, whether it's your Sunday school class, whether it be what's going on in the neighborhood, what is in the office, you can enjoy your conversational experience around the table with your friends. Well, I hope that this has been helpful. And if you are doing a dinner, an annual dinner or an annual dessert or an annual gala or an annual buffet, I hope that we didn't you know, step on your toes too much. Hopefully you found uh, this information helpful uh, because again, this isn't about you know, right or wrong. You know, this isn't, you know, we're right, you're wrong. Uh, this is just simply, we've tried all the buffets, we've been through it ourselves and we have learned that when you treat people well and you give them a great experience and you give them a very organized, structured, to the point program that explains uh, the problem that the ministry exists for and 
what you're going to do specifically to solve that problem and you give them the opportunity to participate in solving that problem, you know, through a very structured program, people respond well. They're going to return the favor with a nice gift. A nice gift. And it will be more than the cost of your meal. Right. Most likely. Much more. Um, and that is what we've seen uh, in 38 years in doing this, yeah. um, that uh, it's a, it's far outweighs the buffet experience. Yes. Well, like I said, if you are interested in learning more about the Perfect Vision Dinner model that Jim and I teach, uh, we actually do um, coaching calls uh, through our course. Uh, we offer a course two times a year. We do one in the spring and one in the fall. Uh, we only open it up to about 50 organizations at a time. So the space is limited and we only have enrollment open for about a month. So if you head over to fundraisingmasterminds.net and you see that enrollment is open, you better jump on that because the space is going to be gone before you know it. And that is going to be closed down. So definitely do that. A lot of times when I'm talking to people on the phone, they'll say, well, you know, I don't know if we'll do this or not. And I, I always say, I don't think you can afford not to do this right. because there's an opportunity cost right? When you think about like yeah. the cost of our course mm -hmm. and you think about like, well, you know, I'm going to have to make a small investment to be able to learn this. Right. Uh, but what is it going to cost you to not learn it? Right. Right. If, if we're telling you, you can probably raise about double by switching to this model. Mm -hmm. You got to think about that. Um, there's right. a cost involved right. Right. in doing the same thing. Yep. And uh, we really want to teach best practices uh, to you so that you can maximize your impact because our goal is to get you fully funded this year. So definitely check out the Perfect Vision Dinner, fundraisingmasterminds.net. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button on YouTube and let us know in the comments what you thought of this episode. Jim, any final thoughts about this topic of plated versus buffet? No, I. the big thing for me is just that memorable experience. That's what I have to keep coming back to yeah. is that we want to provide a memorable experience for people and a positive memorable experience. And a plated is going to give you a positive versus a negative on the yeah. buffet. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Fundraising Masterminds podcast. We will see you next week. Take care.